Gambling's a secret disease. People will keep it, even from those closest to them. They don't even like to admit to themselves what's happening, let alone someone else. One of the ways that people find to ease financial pressure is, is to get some other money. But the problem with gambling is that you use whatever ready money you've got to gamble, and when you lose it, you've actually compounded your problem. I've stolen money out of my kids' piggy banks, stolen money out of my parents' purses, out of wallets, been to friends' places and stolen money out of their wallets. Um, and that's what it's about. You need, when you haven't got the money, you need to be able to find it somewhere. Could be happening to your neighbour, to your husband, to your wife, to your son. It happens to so many people. I'm a 62-year-old New Zealand European and I've spent a lot of my life uh, with, with a major gambling problem. I can actually quite vividly remember the first time I ever gambled. I was actually only seven years of age. Back in the 50s, the only form of gambling in New Zealand was racehorses. Parents were very keen and so every Saturday was taken up with them listening to the races. And it was when the Queen came out, her first visit to New Zealand, and the whole school was off to see the Queen. I couldn't go. I had an accident on my trolley and ended up with a nail in my body. As compensation, my father said, you can have a double. And I could sit and listen to the races with them on Saturday. And that was the very first time I actually remember gambling, yeah. Gambling has become a problem for many New Zealanders. Casinos, pokey machines and online betting has reinvented the way we are gambling. Narelle Nicholson is a psychologist working as a counsellor and educator for the Problem Gambling Foundation and sees firsthand the social problems gambling causes in society. Gambling problems don't discriminate. They go across all socioeconomic groups. People tend to go into gambling like anyone else, like you or I. Very naively, it's just a bit of fun, just a bit of entertainment. There are two types of problem gamblers, action gamblers and escape gamblers. Action gamblers are addicted to the thrill of risk taking. Gambling itself is their drug. Action gamblers prefer games of skill such as card games. Escape gamblers gamble to escape emotional pain, worries and loneliness. People often remember their first big win, what they considered a big win at the time. Lynette was a successful career woman, owning her own home, driving a flash car, living the good life in Christchurch. Then suddenly, one big win on the pokies in the casino began a cycle of losing, which would turn Lynette's life upside down. The casino had opened, I don't know how long, but um, my partner was quite keen on going there, so um, I used to go along with him and we'd have a meal there. And he'd have a wee play and I'd wander around and get a bit bored. But one day I put some money in and won $1,000, but I'd only put $2 in and I'd got 500 credits and I didn't know it was a $2 machine. <laughs> so when I went to take them up, I got quite a shock. There are four phases to gambling. The winning phase begins with a big win leading to excitement and a positive view of gambling. You never know when that win's just around the corner. And there's always a chance of a win, but the reality is there's more losses than wins. With gambling, the more you do it, the more you're likely to lose. I started going when the casino started and I think that was 1994 in Christchurch and it became quite a social thing to do and it was pleasure. I think between the five and ten year stage I started getting a bit more of the habit into obsession where I started spending more money. After the winning phase begins the losing phase. Problem gamblers become more and more preoccupied with gambling. They start to gamble alone, borrow money, skip work, lie to family and friends and default on debts. I was playing sometimes every day and for over four hours a day and then of course you were chasing your money because you'd put so much in. I remember spending one day I'd put $500 into a machine and I run out of money. That initial experience of feeling a winner and feeling a bit of a buzz and a high, getting something for nothing, um, is harder and harder and harder to replicate. I'm 52, I class myself as a mental health patient and I am an addictive gambler. I started gambling when I was 13 or 14. Started going to the races while I was supposed to be at school. Gambling on horses at that early age. It became a delusional world. I spent a lot of time making a lot of stuff up. Lying became very second nature. 
The Problem Gambling Foundation offers free and confidential counselling throughout New Zealand. Jenny Curry works as a counsellor and educator in South Auckland, helping gamblers in crisis. The person comes to me for an interview and that's where I talk to them, get a, um, a, a picture of the gambling problem. We look at things like their gambling behaviour over the last three months or 12 months. Have they ever lied about gambling to their families? Have they gone back to chase losses? Have they got themselves in severe debt because of the gambling? I'm from Switzerland and I'm in New Zealand since 1979. I was grown up in a society. Gambling was, a, that was just the thing of the society. When I was come over here, I had the same attitude. It wasn't really until my mid-twenties mid that it, became, it began to really affect my life. It would be a bet on every race in New Zealand. It was really just what I could get from my fortnightly salary, what I would spend on the horses on a week. But it was always I was paying catch-up. You know, I'd cash a cheque ahead of time and then I would be having to wait until the next payday to get the money back in the bank. And then it was kind of always, always running, running behind time. Horses were my form of gambling up until the internet started. Once the internet started, um, it became become um, online betting. I opened accounts uh, in Australia because it was easy to cover up and become an online gambler. You no longer have to leave your home to lose your home. So online poker is another form of gambling and it creates a new audience, if you like. So very popular with young males. Now people in Chatham Islands can have a lotto ticket, so we'll put it online. But it's, it's, that's not the issue. The issue is all of the other people who will get into it. And maybe they wouldn't have bothered going down to the, going down to the shop on, on a particular Saturday. Or maybe they would have only gone down there and spent five or six dollars. Now they can spend 150, you know, in a week and, it, and it's okay. Some people, they're looking for excitement and escape from boredom. For other people, it's, it's the result of um, more severe underlying issues. So things that um, have come from their childhood, from trauma, uh, physical, emotional abuse at some point in their lives that they've never recovered from. In my upbringing, I had just myself and, 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 and a brother, so it's just two of us. I always felt second best, and that's what made me gamble, actually. It was my time out to get away from the jealous feeling I had, from the envy I had to other people, from the anger I had, from the frustration I had inside, to my parents. They call it the crack cocaine of gambling, pokies, and it's affecting a lot of women my age who, through loneliness sometimes, or boredom or whatever, it's, a, it's, it's so convenient and it's destroying lives. Every day, New Zealanders lose $5.5 million in gambling. This amounts to over $2 billion lost in one year. I think the community needs to know that gambling can affect anyone, and it's often hidden within families. They're using it as a way of coping with life. Good morning. Welcome to your first session of counselling. Hi. What brings you here today? Partners don't often know that their spouses have a gambling problem. Gambling is very interesting because it is so concealed. Good morning, Problem Gambling Foundation, for here speaking. If someone's hiding an activity, it suggests that they know that if they told people who care about them about it, that they'd probably be critical. People go into what we call a desperation phase, where they're trying harder and harder to um, get those small wins. Um, often they're needing bigger wins over time to get the same high. Um, that's a very big feature that gambling's become a problem for someone. Gambling became such a problem for Robin that she went to extraordinary lengths to obtain money to feed her addiction to the pokey machines. I use lots of facilities to get money. We can use FBOS machines in the casino. I could fiddle money between my accounts. I could go to the machine and find out, oh, my automatic payment hasn't come out yet. Oh, I'll take that out before it goes. You're able to get credit on your credit cards. There is no limits. So therefore I would push the limits because it was always the next money would be the next win. When I pushed the button next time I knew it was going to go off but it had to go off. Someone was going to win it so I couldn't get off my machine. 
I link it to alcohol or drug addiction because it races through, through your blood. You just want to get going, you want to play. I would go out to my car, I would find any parking meter money, I would find, I would walk around the casino and see if I knew anyone there that I could borrow off. I go to the F-Bus machine and if I go before midnight, I can overthrow because the click's over midnight. You turn to a con artist. 